Hi there, my name is Julia Fokel. I am a second year computer science major at the University of Chicago, um, as well as a member of the softball team. I was given the pleasure of performing Sweet Home Chicago by the Blues Brothers to you from San Diego, California. Welcome to the 2020 University of Chicago Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I am Rosie Resch, the Interim Director of Athletics and Recreation, and it is my honor to be with you at this virtual ceremony to recognize this year's inductees. Before we begin, I would like to share some brief Zoom housekeeping information. 
If at any point throughout the program you experience technical issues, please connect with us by using the Q&A box. A member from our team will reach out to assist you. We regret that we are gathering in a virtual setting, but our pride in the achievement of these five inductees was about to burst, so we decided that we could wait no longer. Welcome, Frank Aredo, class of 1992 from North Carolina and family members in Chicago. Welcome to the Baldea family in Chicago who will be accepting the award for our late baseball coach, Brian Baldea. Welcome, Peter Hildebrand, class of 1967 from Washington, D.C., and family members in Chicago and St. Louis. Welcome to the Mandrell family in Chicago and relatives in South Carolina, Virginia, and New Mexico, who are representing the late Vedas Catherine Mandrell, class of 1978. And good morning to Nafi Mojidi Baina, class of 2008, who joins us from Dubai, United Arab Emirates, along with her family in Maryland. I would also like to welcome family, friends, teammates, and members of our university and athletic community who are joining us from coast to coast. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we hope that you are able to join us at scheduled inductee breakout sessions. Each inductee will have their own session, a place to connect with past teammates and coaches, family and friends. Session links are available by visiting reply.uchicago.edu backslash A-H-O-F and will also be sent through the chat function at the conclusion of the ceremony. It is now my pleasure to introduce Michelle Rasmussen, Dean of Students in the University. Michelle provides strategic leadership and oversees those departments, including the Departments of Athletics and Recreation, that provide essential services to our students. Michelle has been a tireless supporter of our athletic community during these challenging times. Michelle? Thank you, Rosie. I too would like to welcome you to the 2020 Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you as we celebrate this year's honorees. To say that much has changed since we last gathered for this event would indeed be an understatement. We have all been affected by the events of the recent months. And for many of us, the loss, disruption, dislocation, and disappointment have been profound. On behalf of the Department of Athletics and Recreation and the University of Chicago, I hope you, your family, and your loved ones stay well in the months ahead. Back in March, the university had to suddenly and very unexpectedly pivot to a whole new way of operating. We very quickly ramped down our research, our in-person instruction, and all of our on-campus activities to adjust to the pandemic. Since then, the efforts of thousands of people, faculty, senior administrators, staff, and some students has been critical to getting us to this point where we can resume safely in-person campus operations. I, for one, could not be more excited to welcome back our students and to greet our newest members of the community as we embark together on what will truly be a collective effort to stay safe, but make sure that we retain the values and mission of the University of Chicago. Even though everything will look and feel different this fall, it will still be the same university we all remember and love. It'll be the same faculty, it'll be the same students, it'll be the same dedicated staff. So I think that while we have to be prepared to adjust our behaviors, think differently about how far away we should be from one another and what we should need to be wearing on our face at all times, I think we'll be just fine. Obviously, our varsity athletic program had to undergo some significant modifications this, this fall. And while we had to cancel our competitive season, I am confident that we'll be able to deliver to our student athletes a memorable and important experience. To that end, I owe an amazing amount of thanks to our head coaches, their coaching staff, all of the administrators in athletics and recreation, and the staff who have worked tirelessly to come up with a plan to make sure that our varsity athletes have meaningful opportunities to come together, 
train, practice, and one day eventually play. I'd also like to extend my deepest gratitude to the athletics and recreation staff who have made it possible for our facility to be safely reopened for recreational and fitness activities for all of our students. It's been a monumental effort and they've done an incredible job and I could not be more proud of them. Even with all the changes that are coming up this fall, there is still much work to do. We have to re remember our strategic plan that we finalized last year and pick up where we left off in terms of meeting its goals and priorities. And in January, we will launch a national search for our new director of athletics and recreation. At times like these, it's tempting and understandable to cancel, postpone, and even give up on the things we used to do. But we need to preserve traditions and forge ahead to honor those who deserve to be celebrated, including the remarkable five Maroons who will be inducted into the Hall of Fame at this special event. Thank you for your support of U Chicago Athletics. Go Maroons. Thank you, Michelle. Before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the work of the Hall of Fame Selection Committee that is ably chaired by Tina Park. Additional members include Kathleen Abbott, Joe Bochensky, Tom Costello, Dan Cozy, Eva De Laurentiis, Mike Hayes, Gary Harrigal, Nathan Lindquist, Kelsey Moore, Kelly Osler, and Dennis Walden. I'm pleased to announce an important addition to the proceedings of the annual induction ceremony. We are celebrating our past with this year's inductees, and we are always looking to the future. But I am pleased to introduce three students who represent our present. Hello, everyone. My name is Emma Griffith. I'm a rising fourth year majoring in law, letters, and society, and a member of the women's volleyball team. I'm also the president of the Women's Athletic Association this year. My name is John Paul Phillips, and I am a rising third year majoring in physics and a member of the men's swimming and diving team. I'm co-president of Order of the Sea this year. And my name is Ben Saracen. I'm an incoming third year economics major here at the college, a member of the varsity wrestling team and co-president of Order of the Sea. Last year, I had the privilege to attend the Hall of Fame ceremony and hear some truly incredible stories about our athletic program's former stars and about our rich Chicago athletic tradition. I am so honored to be here again tonight, albeit at a physical distance this time. And though we are physically distant from each other, I feel that this event provides us with a great opportunity to connect. Though many of us here tonight are from different generations, have different backgrounds, and have ventured on different paths, we all share a strong connection through our status as University of Chicago student athletes. We have woken up early for morning lifts, run from class to make afternoon practice, studied and slept on long bus rides for games and meets, and worked together to compete at the highest level. Amidst all this chaos, in which we are pushing ourselves to our furthest extent physically and mentally, we have found our greatest moments. It was in these times that we built our deepest bonds with our teammates, coaches, and players. Bonds that will be remembered forever, friends that will be kept dearly for the rest of our lives. Everyone here tonight is connected by the common conviction that our greatest moments are found through our struggle. We feel the deepest connection to those around us. We're united in toiling for something greater than ourselves. The past few months have been unlike any other that we've experienced in our lifetimes. We've been confused, angry, isolated, and unsure of what the future holds. As student athletes, we've faced a unique challenge as we've been unable to play the sports we love, unable to connect in the way we know how, and left to question who we are without our sports. Throughout all these experiences, we've also experienced moments of hope, growth, and support in ways we didn't know existed. While our fall teams will be the second season of athletes unable to compete. We stand here today knowing that playing our sport is not the only thing that plays a role in our athletic experience at UChicago. The athletic community at UChicago is just that, a community. It's a group of hardworking individuals who, despite playing a wide range of sports, are all connected. As typical routines of morning lifts, afternoon practices, and team meals faded away, we have found that the community remains. The Women's Athletic Association and the Order of the Sea have served as lifelines, holding us together and reminding us of the greater community we're all a part of as athletes at the University of Chicago. In these times of isolation, athletics continues to provide connection for each of us, however far we travel from Hyde Park. 
As a community of athletes, the Order of the Sea and WA bring together athletes from all different sports at the university, breaking down the barriers that normally separate teams and allowing athletes to interact with each other in ways that they wouldn't normally be able to. By bringing athletes together, these organizations foster a culture of team spirit among athletes and create an environment that lives up to our goals of competitive excellence and truly being all in. The Order of the Sea and WA also serve as outlets for our athletes to give back to the surrounding Hyde Park community, routinely organizing volunteering events and fundraising events so our athletes can use their platform for something more. Now, in these uncertain times, the mission of the Order of the Sea and WA is as important as ever. Connecting our athletes to each other and giving back to our communities remain essential goals as we navigate the new challenges we are presented with every day. We hope to continue to promote the, the excellence that the University of Chicago is known for and, loved, and live up to the legacy of the university's great athletes of the past, including tonight's five incredible inductees. I am so glad we can come together and celebrate our common belief as members of the University of Chicago athletic tradition to celebrate our dedication and triumphs and to honor some of the best to do it. Tonight, we are honoring cross country and track athlete, Peter Hildebrand, who is noted by his brother, another Hall of Fame inductee, for his selflessness and compassion as a leader. Hildebrand was an NCAA All-American and held the school record for the indoor 5,000 meter for 14 years. We are also honoring Frank Aredo, who was cited by his teammates for his incredible leadership, passion, and drive as a Maroon wrestler. He was a two-year captain, four-time UAA champion, and an NCAA All-American. Lastly, we are honoring the late Brian Baldea, who gave 28 years to our university and is noted by his colleagues for bringing out the absolute best of all the athletes he coached. He served as the winningest coach of Maroon baseball history and developed a culture of excellence as associate athletic director. These men have given so much to the UChicago Athletics Department and their respective teams. Outside of achieving excellence in their sport, inspiring the next in line to build on their legacy of greatness, they have set a standard of care character for you Chicago athletes and coaches. They have taught us that we should aim to be outstanding leaders, lifting those around us as we ourselves rise and to give our all to all that we pursue. The standards they have set continue to shape our student athletes today and serve as a linkage between the history of Chicago athletics and the future. Tonight, we're also honoring two incredible women who pushed forward our athletic program and the Women's Athletic Association during their time at the university. Vedas Kothran Mandrell did what is so rare now and competed in three different varsity sports year round, exemplifying her commitment to the athletic community as a whole. Between volleyball, basketball, and softball practices, she even founded the first women's soccer club in her spare time. She was a star on the court and field alike and a committed leader always, serving as the women's basketball team co-captain for all four years and the Women's Athletic Association president for two. Nafisatu Mojidi Baina was a multi-sport athlete as well, competing in women's basketball and track and field. She held eight school records and five UAA titles by the time she graduated, and that was only on the track. On the basketball court, she garnered three all UAA awards and led her team to win over 70% of their games across her career. The athletes who make up the women's teams today, each with an individual journey and reason they love to play, are supported by the foundation that Nafisatu and Vedas helped to build in their historic seasons. 30 years apart and in completely different conferences during their time at UChicago, each honoree led her team forward and laid the groundwork for future women to come. Both women and the women who competed before and between them are connected to each play we make, game we win, and season we're a part of. Just as the connection between U Chicago athletes today extends beyond the confines of Ratner, Crown, Stag, and even Hyde Park, it extends beyond our short four years on campus as well. All five honorees tonight were incredible athletes, teammates, and leaders during their collegiate careers, but their impact goes so far beyond that. We carry them with us every day, and especially now, cherish the connection we all share as University of Chicago athletes. Thank you to our inductees tonight for guiding the development of the wonderful athletic tradition we enjoy at the University of Chicago and for serving as a source of inspiration for future generations. Congratulations on this incredible achievement. Emma, Ben, and JP, thank you for your remarks and the leadership of your teams and of the Women's Athletic Association and the Undergraduate Order of the Sea. Before we begin the induction ceremony, I would like to acknowledge the work of Katie Britton, Nathan Lindquist, Katie Morris, and UChicago Creative for their efforts in communicating with our inductees and presenters and creating this evening's video presentation. 
John Fitzgerald, baseball coach and voice of the Maroons, will begin our presentations. Frank Arredo excelled on the wrestling mat at the University of Chicago from 1988 through 1992. Grappling at his 126-pound weight class, Arredo was a four-time University Athletic Association champion and was named the UAA's Most Outstanding Wrestler in 1992. A two-time team captain, Arredo compiled a banner senior campaign when he earned All-American status after placing fourth at the NCAA Championships. A two-time NCAA qualifier, Arredo won the 1992 regional title after defeating the nation's number one ranked wrestler in his weight class. Arredo helped the Maroons place in the top 15 in the team standings twice at the NCAA Championships, including a 13th place finish in 1992, which ranks as the highest placement in program history. Congratulations to Frank Arredo, a member of the University of Chicago's Hall of Fame class, 2020. Hello. I'm Leo Coker. I was Frank Arredo's wrestling coach during his career at Chicago. One of the things my coaching career has taught me is that People go through a huge change from 18 years old to 22 years old. And while I think that's true of everyone, I think it is more true of Frank Aredo than any wrestler I've coached. And by that, I don't mean that Frank had further to go than anyone else. I mean that Frank really developed a gift for understanding what was necessary, what it took in order to achieve his goals. An example of that is uh, Frank's senior year. He had, you know, he had come off. He had a pretty good career at that point. He three-time UAA champion, qualified for the NCAA tournament. But the goals were pretty clear for his senior year, and that was win another UAA title and make the All-American podium to be an NCAA All-American. So we were working hard. But in early January, we decided to try a new training technique. And that was to wrestle 15 minutes against assistant coach Joe Bachensky. Now, two things about that. Number one, an exhausting wrestling match is seven minutes long. 15 minutes is just another order. And the other thing was Joe Bachensky took second in the nation. Joe Bachensky is a member of this Hall of Fame. And Joe Bachensky, at that point, had defeated a few Division I All-Americans in competition. So this was going to be no picnic. But Frank Aredo embraced it. Day after day, Frank wrestled Joe in a 15-minute match. And they went at it hammer and tong, tooth and nail. It was painful. It was exhausting. But Frank decided that's what he needed to do in order to get where he wanted to be. So after a few weeks of this, we felt Frank was very ready to wrestle with anyone, and he proved it. At the uh, NCAA qualifier, the NCAA regional, Frank had the number one ranked wrestler in his weight class, the number one wrestler in the nation. And Frank just blew through him. It was a great win, and it gave Frank Conference for the Nationals, where Frank wrestled some tremendous matches and finished fourth in the NCAA. I think that Frank coming to Chicago was really fortunate in that that gift of knowing, trying to figure out what it took and being willing to do what it takes, that also applied to his University of Chicago education, applied to his life afterwards and his career, raising his family, and I think he's done a tremendous job. So Frank... Congratulations, we're all proud of you. Thank you, Leo, for that introduction, I think. I know you and Joe were concocting something last week and not sure if that was a roast. In any event, thank you, Leo, thank you, Joe, and thank you everyone for signing in today to this virtual ceremony. I know these are challenging times. Hope you and your families have been safe and well. Lucky for you today, You only have me for a couple minutes. I know watching this virtually has to be difficult, especially for me. 
It has been about a hundred takes or so, and I still haven't figured out where to look in the camera. I also have a dog that likes to walk by and make cameo appearances, so be aware that might happen. So I'll be brief and get right into it and start by thanking my parents for the countless hours they spent driving me to practices, taking me to tournaments, sitting there all day long, also getting second jobs to pay for equipment and camps I said I needed to attend. So just very fortunate to have supportive parents to help me get to where I am today. I also want to thank our trainer, Lisa Spies, who spent a lot of time with our team keeping us healthy and me in particular and working on my flexibility. So thank you, Lisa, for that. And to my teammates and coaches, Jeff Farwell, Sean Delahante, Pat Payne, Craig Tanabe, Gary McLaughlin, Doug Logan, Steve Lorig, for really pushing me in practice and really sharing some great moments and some tough times together as well as Hall of Fame members, Bob Kerrigan, Kerry Starnell, Peter Wong, for their leadership and guidance, and some real special influences for me, Mario Springer, Joe Bachensky, both Hall of Fame members, as well as Coach Coker, and a couple who came before me, Carl Leitzen and Gene Shin, who really set the tone for our program and made a name for it. Both of them are Hall of Famers as well. Now I wanna just jump back and talk about a couple of wrestlers I just mentioned. Peter Wong, I had the good fortune to wrestle with him all four years. He was one of the best wrestlers in division three history and I had a front row seat. Just incredible to see his mental toughness and never matched again, I think, in my mind. So just thankful to see that Peter and appreciate you sharing that experience with me. Also, Mario Springer. I said this then and I continue to say it. He is the consummate teammate and consummate friend. I know he's a couple of years behind me, but he was mature beyond his years. And I looked up to him then and I still look up to him now. His integrity, his work ethic, and most importantly, his treatment of others. Just a great human being. And I wanna spend the last couple of minutes talking about Jobo and Coach Coker. Jobo, he was really tough on me when I first started and he really is still tough on me, but I learned so much from him, his discipline, his moral compass, his relationship with his family, incredible. And I'm just lucky to have him as a friend and really proud to call him as my mentor. So thank you, Joe, for everything you you had and have given to me. <clears throat> and then there's Leo, Coach Coker. I thought I had a lot of idiosyncrasies but then I met Leo. He had a very particular way to accomplish what he wanted. I didn't realize it at the time, but he was really shaping me into a better wrestler and a better person. I've had the good fortune to see a lot of coaches from time to time and camps and clubs that my kids attend. And Leo to me still remains on top. His technical skills are incredible but also the mental game is even better. He created a confidence in me that I didn't have, really got me to achieve my potential. So I'm very thankful for that and really proud to have him as my coach. But I'm most thankful for really what everybody created in me, this passion to continue wrestling beyond my competitive years. So I can really pass it on to my two sons, Anthony and Nicholas, who are in sixth and seventh grade and just beginning their wrestling journeys now. I'm able to coach them, I'm able to wrestle with them and really instill within them all of what I learned from the wrestlers I just mentioned. And it's really a great honor to share this, this recognition with them and have them see me enter into the Chicago Hall of Fame. So thank you for that. And thank you again for this honor and recognition. Have a good night. Brian Baldea served the University of Chicago Department of Athletics and Recreation as both head baseball coach and associate athletic director during his 28 years on the Midway. The winningest head coach in program history, Baldea accumulated a school record 411 career victories during his 24 seasons in the Maroons' dugout. Over his tenure, which spanned from 1991 to 2014, 
Aldea's squads produced 14 winning seasons, including nine campaigns of at least 20 victories. Prior to Coach Baldea's arrival, the Maroons had eclipsed the 20-win plateau just once over the program's first 98 years of intercollegiate baseball. During his tenure as head coach, over 30 Maroon players garnered postseason recognition by the University Athletic Association, while 15 Maroons earned NCAA All-Region honors during his final five seasons alone. He was lauded for helping develop a generation of student-athletes by instilling leadership, integrity, work ethic, and accountability. Congratulations to Brian Baldea, a member of the University of Chicago's Hall of Fame class, 2020. Good evening. My name is John Fitzgerald. I'm the current head baseball coach here at the University of Chicago. I had the great fortune of not only playing for, but also working alongside Coach Baldea in the athletic department, followed his retirement as head baseball coach seven years ago. It is a distinct pleasure and privilege to be able to participate in this outstanding event tonight, providing the highest honor to a man who so truly established this baseball program and provided so much more to the University of Chicago community over his 29 years in Hyde Park. Now, Coach Baldea finished his 24-year career in the Maroon dugout as the winningest coach in program history. That factor alone is typically enough for most coaches to garner Hall of Fame accolades at their respective institutions. However, to take those 411 career wins as the sole benchmark for Coach Baldea's Hall of Fame status would truly be short-sighted. Coach Baldea was so much more. First and foremost, Coach Baldea was truly a teacher. Now, Hall of Fame coaches are oftentimes defined by the amount of wins or championships that they are able to enjoy during their respective tenures. There is another group of Hall of Fame coaches, many of whom share those same benchmarks, but whose excellence in teaching so transcends the sport itself. That is a category Coach Baldea distinctly belongs in. I firmly believe that if Coach Baldea was hired as the head women's basketball coach, the head men's tennis coach, or even the softball coach back in 1990, there would be somebody else up here on video right now describing the Hall of Fame career of their former head coach, Brian J. Baldea. That is because Coach Baldea's skill level so transcended the sport of baseball. Now, luckily forever, Coach Baldea will be a Hall of Famer in the sport of baseball. But he excelled in creating a framework and a formula for how his student athletes can attack life following graduation with integrity, honesty, passion, accountability, and he did so on a daily basis with a compassionate and caring heart. Now, like many former collegiate athletes, some of Coach Baldea's former players might be watching TV or reading a book one night and have a memory trigger. Former player, former teammate, former season, former road trip even. Maybe for one of Coach Baldea's former favorite sayings, none of which are repeatable on this video right now. But when Coach Baldea's former players left the dugout for the final time in a Chicago uniform, they knew exactly how to attack life. As a father, as an employee, and a man of integrity. Those were reinforced. Those were ingrained. Not to come up as some fleeting memory 20 years down the line, but as a toolbox for how to achieve and attack life following graduation. When a coach has the ability to so profoundly impact the postgraduate and collegiate lives of his student athletes, I firmly believe he has truly attained the title of Hall of Famer in any book. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tony Baldea, I'm Brian Baldea's son. Uh, shortly you will meet uh, my mother, sister, and son. Um, first of all, just want to say thank you uh, to the university for this recognition uh, for my father's work um, and also to Coach Fitz for his uh, kind words of uh, introduction. Um, you know, I think my father would have been so honored to have been a part of of a ceremony such as this that recognized his lifelong passion uh, for my father 
being a baseball coach wasn't just about athletics. It was about teaching young men um, how to compose themselves and how to lead a, a fruitful life and, and be a good person. You know, one of his players told me a story um, after he passed that um, my father had a team meeting in which he was going to go over the team rules. Um, and the players were all guessing that the team rules were going to be very in-depth um, with in regards to grade point average and curfews and behavior and whatnot. But it turns out my father just had three simple rules for his team, uh, which was to be on time, second, be a good person, and third, be a good teammate. And to him that meant for the first uh, being on time didn't just mean being punctual, it meant being prepared both mentally and emotionally for whatever venture you were going into. Being a good person meant composing yourself with high morality and ethics at all times. And being a good teammate meant treating others with respect and treating others in the way that you would want to be treated back um, so that you can work together as a unit to achieve a common goal. So I think those three team rules um, stand for what my father believed in and for the values that he imposed um, upon his players um, over the many years that he was a coach and, and led to uh, many successes and not just on the field, but off the field. So thank you again uh, for this recognition. Um, we're very thrilled uh, to be a part of this ceremony and look forward to chatting with some of you in the breakout session afterwards. Kathy Baldea, and I was married to Brian for four years before he passed away. And our family is very honored to receive this award, very humbled. And we also would like to thank Coach Fitz, Fitz for giving the introductory speech and I would like to introduce my daughter Gina and this is my grandson just born Vincent Bryan on September 4th and I would also like to show you this little teddy bear that I had made this was from one of Brian's shirts and it has Grandpa Brian on the bottom Hi, I'm Brian's daughter, Gina, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to the university for honoring my dad with this award and for honoring our entire family. We could really tell that he cherished all the years he spent coaching at UChicago and that the players and the staff there meant the absolute world to him. So this award is really a great reflection of that. So thank you again from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate this. Peter Hildebrand was a standout runner for the Maroon Cross Country and track and field teams throughout the mid-1960s. Hildebrand capped his outstanding cross-country career by earning All-American status with a 12th place finish at the NCAA College Division Championship. Previously, Hildebrand had also scored on the national scene after finishing in the top 30 at the NCAA Championships in both 1964 and 1965. Hildebrand's talent and contributions helped lead the University of Chicago's cross-country teams to top 25 finishes during the national meets in three of his four seasons in Hyde Park. In track and field, Hildebrand established a school record in the indoor 5,000 meters, a mark that stood for 14 years, and today he still ranks among the top 10 in that category. Congratulations to Peter Hildebrand, a member of the University of Chicago's Hall of Fame class, 2020. Hi, I'm Dan Hildebrand, here to introduce my brother Peter. I'm eight years younger than Peter, and so like many young siblings, his accomplishments made a huge impression on me. The fact that our family lived in Hyde Park, allowing me to watch many of his races, only amplified my early hero worship. In my mind, Peter won all of his races and set all of those records. In fact, by the time he graduated in 1967, Peter held all of the University of Chicago cross-country and track records for distances of a mile or longer, both indoors and out. I, on the other hand, had the misfortune of starting my running career as a freshman at the lab school, having to run on the same track and cross-country course that Peter was setting records on as a college senior. 
I was truly terrible. Peter was an all-American. Even so, he was always encouraging me, even though I was often placing last in my high school meets. When Peter became an All-American in cross-country out on the Wheaton College course, I was only vaguely aware because he did not invite the family. Standing on that very same starting line eight years later, my parents and Peter were there. With video camera in hand, Peter walked up to me, filming me in those very nervous moments before the gun. It being my only chance to become an All-American, I asked Peter, so what happens if I don't make it? And he replied, then we'll have a film of you screwing up. I only succeeded and broke some of his records because he guided me there. By the time it became apparent that I was closing in on his records, he had returned to the U of C as a graduate student. He wrote out for me all of his best times and his records and explained Coach Ted Hayden's workout plans and philosophy. When I was inducted into this Hall of Fame, I asked to share the award with him because he is the reason for my athletic success. Our records are only fractions of a second apart. Although denied, it is with immense pleasure and great love that I now get to see him honored for his tremendous accomplishments. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Peter Hildebrand. Uh, I'm just really honored and pleased to have been nominated uh, for this award. Uh, it's, uh, it was a great thing to, uh, to be an athlete at the University of Chicago, and I'll just say a few words about that experience because they were incredibly formative uh, for me in many ways through my life. I was an, an undergraduate from 1963 through 1967, and uh, and after a very short time at playing soccer in my first season in 63, I escaped to the indoor track uh, team for the 1963 winter season and stayed with running with the, for the University of Chicago and then for the University of Chicago Track Club after that, uh, all the way through seven, 1976 uh, when I got my PhD. Uh, the the uh, track program, an athletic program at the university was immensely important to me through all of this and as a part of my learning experience at the university because it is very formative in learning uh, how to work myself hard to achieve, how to, w- to, uh, to win through uh, things I want, wanted to achieve, uh, how to uh, live with not being the leader in winning uh, on some things and that happened in track, it happened in other things and accepting the uh, Achievements of others has been an important part of that um, and working with them and through all of this uh, You know, I I learned how to work as hard as I could and how to plan Ahead to work hard and and achieve things Um, Part of this a major major part of this was leadership from coach Hayden who was the track and cross-country coach at the University of Chicago and he was just so characteristic of the outstanding faculty at the University of Chicago uh, whom I encountered uh, whether it was in the athletic program or in the Department of Geophysics. Um, uh, Hayden was just just as outstanding as as anybody else I ran into there and really a great leader and a great mentor. Um, Personally an athlete, a field events athlete, but he also uh, became a, a distance running coach and ended up being the U.S. coach in the U.S. Olympics and led uh, his teams on the University of Chicago to various, through many awards and the University of Chicago Track Club to numerous national running championships. Coach Hayden gave guidance to everybody who came, he came in contact with his students, his uh, athletes who came by, and regardless of their ability, it didn't matter a whole lot to him. Uh, what the ability was. Of course, he liked the big winners well, but uh, people who were just starting out or just improving themselves at any level were, were important to him, and he gave them all important uh, uh, attention and guidance uh, with humor and, when needed, with sarcasm that helped them through whatever was going on, and sometimes that was needed too. Uh, through all of this, 
he and the U of C athletics department taught me a whole lot about how to excel and how to win and how to achieve. And this has been so important to me in my career. Uh, it was wonderful there in the athletic department, but since then and in the, the decades since then, it's been so important. Uh, part of this is the humility of competing when com uh, humility of competing with people who are as capable or more capable with you. Um, and that was true in athletics. It was true uh, in, in my professional life later as a meteorologist and, uh, and technologist. Um, and is important, important lessons about continuing to work whether you win or lose, uh, maturing uh, yourself, developing yourself, uh, and focusing on what you have to do to do that. All of these things prepared me so well for the challenges of my life. Uh, and I often look back on the track experiences uh, and cross country experiences as I think about uh, what's going on in my life and what I need to do and what I need to do next. So all those years since 1963 through 1967 at Chicago, it's still paying off for me big time. Thank you, bye-bye. Beta's Catherine Mandrell was a three-sport star at the University of Chicago in women's basketball, volleyball, and softball during the mid to late 1970s. On the basketball court, Catherine Mandrell owns the third highest career scoring average in program history after averaging 14.3 points per game during her career in Hyde Park. A four-year team co-captain and most valuable player, she led the Maroons to basketball tournament championship wins over schools such as MIT, Northwestern, and Brown. Catherine Mandrell was characterized as a natural leader who encouraged and inspired all her teammates to achieve their maximum potential. As an undergraduate, she also co-founded U Chicago's first women's soccer club and served for two years as president of the Women's Athletic Association. Congratulations to Vedas Catherine Mandrell, a member of the University of Chicago's Hall of Fame class, 2020. Good evening. I'm Claire Orner. I'm honored and so happy to represent our teammates and tell you about Vedas Catherine Mandrell. I don't recall the first time I actually met Vedas in the fall of 73, but I do remember seeing her play in a pickup game with the men, which was pretty remarkable in and of itself. And I have such a clear visual. She catches a pass, head fakes, squares to the basket, and puts up the prettiest jump shot I ever saw. I was in awe. She was graceful, yet so powerful, and that experience was powerful for me. I played four years of high school sports with and against some very good female athletes, but none like this one. Vedas was an inspiration. As sweet and gentle as she was off court, in practices and games, she put it all out there. She was physically strong and dominant and insisted the rest of us bring it up a notch. Come on, y'all, we can do this, she'd shout with fire in her eyes. She did not like to lose. She showed us what was possible, so we knew what to strive for. Betis was a much-needed role model for us and for generations to come. A six-foot-tall, quick, agile, and savvy post player, she brought home more than a few MVP awards. And when we'd see her photo in the Trib, we all shared the glory. And after 43 years, 43, she's still tied for third in career points per game, even though we played with the same size ball as the men and there was no three-point shot. There wasn't even any strength training until we got our first eight-station universal gym in our junior year, all the more remarkable that her record still holds. Vedas brought enthusiasm, joy, and humor everywhere she went, and everyone loved her. She'd chat up our opponents with her own brand of trash talk, disguised as Southern charm, but we knew what she was up to. Let us not forget she was also a starter on the volleyball team, and we talked her into playing softball with us, a new sport for her. When we made it to the state tournament for the first time, she stepped up to the plate and ripped a screaming line drive to center field. She was just a natural. Betas fought for more opportunities for women athletes. She was WA president for two years, 
and a student rep to the Association of Intercollegiate Athletics for Women. That was our governing body before the NCAA took an interest in women's sports. She also helped convince Ms. Mulvaney to add field hockey as a varsity sport, and as seniors, we were all proud when she received a coveted Howell Murray Award. It's heartwarming and gratifying that Betas is being recognized for her many contributions to women's sports and our lives. She belongs in the Hall of Fame because she was an exceptional athlete, the best teammate ever, and a true friend, never afraid to show her love for those around her. She played a major role in changing the dynamic for women and how we were viewed, more importantly, how we thought of ourselves as deserving women and athletes who were courageous and strong, just like her. It was a gift to know her. Thank you, and congratulations to Vedas, and to Nelson, her husband, and to Nelson, her son. Good night. Hello, everyone. I'm Nelson Mandrell, and on behalf of Vedas Cothran Mandrell's family, we are thrilled to be a part of this event. I know that Vedas would feel honored and would be proud to be among the distinguished group of inductees to the Athletic Hall of Fame. We would like to thank the University Administration and the Department of Athletics. Vedas had wonderful stories about all of her coaches, friends, and teammates. We want to thank all of you for the great experiences that you created with her and that she shared with us through your friendships over the years. The athletic program at U of C was so important in her life. I had a wonderful time going back through some of the scrapbooks and newspaper articles about free throws and Title IX and seeing pictures of some of you from the 1970s in action. Vetus was a natural athlete. She had been a basketball star in high school back in South Carolina. And she was a natural and agile thinker. You were never quite sure what she would say next or what amazing insight she would share in her beautiful southern accent. But there was always a delightful surprise waiting. She was so charming in such an unpretentious way. I witnessed time and time again faces of strangers with whom they would just start a conversation in her southern way and facial expressions would go from perhaps fear or disinterest to curiosity, to engagement, to fascination, to excitement, and then they were friends forever. Someone at U of C introduced her as charming, disarming, and sometimes alarming. Pretty good description. College is that time when you take who you think you are and expand it into something more. And nothing of this experience was lost on Vedas. The athletics, the people, the ideas, she embraced it all and took it into the world. Vedas always had that spontaneity and freshness of the hometown girl combined with poise and sophistication of the incredibly intelligent cosmopolitan person that she was. She was a fantastic mother. We have a wonderful son who reminds me of her, and I know that she would be so proud of the person that he has become. Those of you who knew her as an athlete know that she was brave and tough and wouldn't quit, and that she could make a shot and knock you down with that hip check thing she did. She got me with that once. Those of you who knew her as a friend know how genuine, kind, and generous she was. For all of the young women and men who are part of the program now, she would be supporting you, cheering you on, celebrating, encouraging, and pushing you to do your best. I wish you could have known her. So, once again, 
to Rosie Resch, the Department of Athletics, all of the university staff who worked to put this event together, the university, all of Vade's friends and teammates. From all of us, on behalf of Vedas, thank you. I feel certain Vedas would have said, thank y'all. What a nice memory. Thank you for that, too. Good night. Nafisatu Mojiri Baina constructed an impactful collegiate career in both women's basketball and track and field from 2004 through 2008 at the University of Chicago. On the basketball hardwood, Mojiri Baina led a resurgent Maroon squad that posted a 73-30 record during her four years while advancing to the Sweet 16 for the first time in school history. Mojiri Baina was a three-time All-UAA honoree while garnering a pair of first-team accolades over her four years on the Ratner Hardwood. She currently ranks second all-time at Chicago with 1,399 career points, 545 field goals, and 226 steals. Mojiri Baina also submitted some of the fastest times in new Chicago track history possessing eight school records at the time of her graduation in events such as the indoor 55 meters, outdoor 100 meters, and indoor and outdoor 200 meters. By the time she hung up her spikes, Mojiti Bina had captured five University Athletic Association track titles. Congratulations to Nafisatu Mojiti Bina a member of the University of Chicago's Hall of Fame class, 2020. Nafi Mojiti, Hall of Famer. Congrats, kid. Very deserving. Uh, very proud of you. Uh, one of the best basketball players that University of Chicago has seen. Uh, one of the best athletes I've ever seen uh, on the basketball court. And really fun to watch. Uh, and I know you had a lot of track success out there, too. In fact, I think it was her junior year that uh, had a disappointment of us uh, not qualifying for the NCAA tournament that year. And she turned that disappointment into joining the track team uh, that Tuesday and actually led them to a, an indoor uh, conference championship that weekend, which was really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, on the basketball court, we, we definitely took advantage of, of her versatility and her speed. A number of times we'd just get rebounds, throw the ball on the other side of the court, and, and she'd kind of take care of the rest. And, you know, as a coach, you, you, you wonder, how, how, does this, how does this happen? You know, the, the physical specimen that, that she was. And, you know, I remember her freshman year, you know, we had a, one of the first pregame meals that, that we had that year. And, you know, you always pay attention as a coach to what your kids are ordering. And food comes and it's, uh, it's, it's a big plate of wings, hot, hot wings, extra hot, of course, for Nafi and, and a chocolate milkshake. And that, that was her meal of champions. That's, that's how she got it done, uh, which obviously was, was a story that, that we, that we love, but just incredible you know, that she was able to do that. And, you know, but also just an incredibly tough kid, you know, kind of that, that program, um, during her four years, we, we improved every year and, and kind of rode her toughness, you know, even her freshman year had an incredible freshman year, probably, probably should have been the rookie of the year, uh, in the league that year. And, um, we, played Wash U, which I think we all figured out not long after that, that we had not beaten them in like 16, 17 years and top five program coming to the Ratner Center. And um, yeah, I mean, she made a play in overtime, you know, kind of stole the ball from a kid at, at half court and, and went in for a layup. And we kind of you know, won the game and, and kind of rode it from there and culminating in, in, in uh, UAA championship her senior year. Uh, but just incredible career. Um, very, very deserving. And, and Nafi, love you, kid. Uh, proud of you. And uh, I hope you enjoy this night. Good morning and evening, friends, family, U of C colleagues, and fellow inductees. It is an incredible honor to be able to express my extreme gratitude being inducted into this year's Hall of Fame as I sit here in Dubai, UAE, my home for the last seven years, especially at this tumultuous and unprecedented time, a proud female student athlete and woman of color. I landed in the USA at the age of six, a Nigerian-born American citizen full of curiosity and unbridled energy. 
Fast forward 11 years later, my mother, Kati Jat Mojiti, bursts into my bedroom in our Silver Spring home singing Sinatra's 64 hit, My Kind of Town Chicago Is. <laughs> the night before, we had just opened my UFC college acceptance letter, and she was as proud as I was nervous and excited. I had no idea the kind of uncommon adventure in store for me fall September 2004. Being a student athlete has always been a badge of honor. Never would I have imagined that many years of AP courses and a membership to the National Honor Society, coupled with ballots and extracurriculars as a three-sport athlete in basketball, track and field, and tennis in high school, were still not enough for the rigor of a U of C student athlete experience. A challenge that still humbles and haunts me even today. But I won't dwell on the sleepless nights at the reg or countless office hours at Booth, plowing through proofs, trying to reach that elusive QED many of us econ majors dreamt of in our attempts to master econometrics. My most fond memories, however, are those connected to my athletic experience at U of C. I recall one of my first collegiate showings as a starting freshman shooting guard. It was a home game and stands were packed with Phoenix fans. I took off on a fast break, my raw speed and raw talent as my teammates described me, compelling me to go forward for one of my signature two-step layups. I thought of myself as fearless, throwing my body into any six foot plus center that dared to come in between me and the basket. As I approached the free throw line, my knees were shaking from the adrenaline and fingertips tingled as I was eager to take my first free throws of my collegiate career. Believe it or not, I missed both shots. Two ugly air balls. Shock and embarrassment permeated through my body and certainly through the stands. But from that one experience, I restored my confidence over the next three years through our infamous home victory over Wash U, followed by our first NCAA Sweet 16 appearance. When it came to track and field, I always said to myself, I'm not a runner. I'm a sprinter, and I do it to keep in shape for basketball. I recall finishing a difficult sophomore basketball season, sore body and disappointed that we didn't make it as far as we had hoped. Even so, I was asked to run with the UFC indoor track team, participating in the UAA finals as an unseeded runner. I had no posted times that season, being that I played basketball that entire winter. But Coach Hall and Coach Banker believed that I could win them just a few points to take home that Wash U title. And by God's grace, I did. Playing basketball and running track and field have simultaneously been my greatest physical feats and challenges in life but there is no possible way I would have ever been eligible for this induction or achieved any level of greatness without God, family, coaches, and teammates believing in me every step of the way. So now I would like to show thanks by naming some of those individuals responsible for transforming my collegiate career, my years in life, and everything I've accomplished to date. It is all a testament of God's work. Now, first and foremost, to the Hall of Fame Selection Committee, thank you for judging me of this honor. To my many coaches, and I'll list them by name, Coach Roussel, Coach Hall, Coach Banker, Coach Parrott, Coach Brooms, Coach Dulia, Coach Lane, Coach White, and my Bullis and AAU coaches, thank you for challenging me, for putting me in numerous situations that tested my will, endurance, resilience, strength, commitment, tenacity, and perseverance. I am forever grateful for your encouragement and dedication to developing my skills and leading me to heightened levels of success on and off the court and track. To my teammates, notably fellow classmates of 08 and 07, Nakaya, Lori, Naomi, Caroline, Myra, Cynthia, and Trina, you ladies were my rock during those four years and beyond. Thank you for your sisterhood and for epitomizing the characteristics of a team player. To my family members, Safi, my twin, one of my greatest athletic inspirations. Our lives have married each other athletically in so many instances. From our invitation to the Nigerian national basketball team to this current honor, me following in your footsteps as you've also been inducted into A10's University of Rhode Island Hall of Fame. I am so proud to be your twin. My older sister, Javi, my academic inspiration, whose class and humility are what I strive to emulate. Thank you. Thank you for your push and thank you for your attitude of excellence. My grandmother, Eva Anderson and Aunt Dee, 
Your prayers from day one have kept me grounded and focused. I thank you eternally. My husband, Mosin, and our newborn son, Adam Idris. I am the most joyful I have ever been in life. And I thank you for your unconditional love and your continual support in this journey. I've reached the end, but of course I've saved the best for last. My mother, Kati Mojiti. No words would do justice in showing my gratitude and adoration to you. So I will start by simply thanking you for instilling in me an insatiable desire to learn, a fervor to live life to the fullest, a heart of empathy and compassion, and a will to be steadfast in accomplishing all I set out to do. I certainly wouldn't be the woman, mother, or wife I am today if it weren't for your tireless efforts, including driving us to and from countless basketball games and track meets all over the U.S., making sure everyone knew you were my biggest support system by your distinct cheering in the crowds. Thank you for my life and your love. I am who I am because of your unrelenting devotion to our family. And for those who may not have been mentioned by name, you all know how important you are to me. Our experience has led us to incredible places, being able to interact with extraordinary people and have opened the doors into our futures and our careers. I am grateful to have the opportunity to share this achievement with you all. Strive to leave every situation better than you found it. Thank you all and God bless. Congratulations to our five very worthy inductees. I was extremely fortunate to work with Brian Baldea and to watch Vedas, Frank, and Nafi in competition. I arrived at the university shortly after Peter's graduation, but I knew of his legendary accomplishments. These five represent what intercollegiate athletics should be about. They were great teammates, athletes, and students, and we are proud to claim them as our own. One final reminder that we are hosting breakout sessions for the inductees immediately following the ceremony. We hope that you are able to join us and congratulate our inductees on this monumental award. Session links are available by visiting reply.uchicago.edu backslash A-H-O-F and are also in the chat function. I look forward to seeing you soon. As we do every year, we will be closing this ceremony with the singing of the University of Chicago alma mater. Please rise and join us.